Yeah, this, this photograph is from Sebastio's work that was published in the Other Americas, and it's an image from the Cerro Pilata mine in Brazil, which in itself is, you know, 50,000 men digging gold, dirt to get gold out of in an, in an open pit in Brazil. And he wasn't, there were many other photographers before him that actually photographed there. But his photographs are so incredibly graphic, and, and this, photo, this photograph is just an amazing, amazing image. Um, partly, um, you get to see the, the pit itself, but it's, it's this body language of the worker with the load of dirt coming up and, and what, you know, by itself would be amazing. But then there's the ladder and then there's his hand, which is brilliant. Most of us would crop the hand out or, be, or, or see that and say, oh my God, I blew the photograph. But it's this brilliant hand that comes in on the edge and it creates this um, composition that floats the viewer down and so you can see how in either direction you move down and then on the back he has the horizon line and you'll notice in most almost all of his photographs are horizontal he sees horizontally and he there there are very few vertical images in his work uh, but the horizontal nature again this tone of even though you know the sky it's really not the sky but he has that a lot of his photographs and then this line of, of people um, and it's just a, a dramatic, dramatic image. The dirt, I mean, the detail that you get in his photographs, the shoes, um, the little pebbles in the rock, the, the, the worker standing here, the, the ladders. I mean, these are all um, elements in his photographs that are just quite amazing. The, the detail, everything becomes a detail. He's seeing the whole thing, and he's really thinking about um, not himself, but how he tells the story to others. And so um, the amazing part of his work is um, that he wants us as viewers to have the experience he had. It's not about him. He he's really takes himself outside of the photograph, which is not how most people, most amateurs photograph or most people photograph. Um, he, you, don't, you don't see Sebastio Salgado. And it's really not about Sebastio Salgado. It's really about the tragedy of these men's lives in this open pit digging for gold and um, it's just an amazing amazing iconic image. This photograph was taken in 1985 it's from Sebastio's uh, project um, in the Sudan uh, it's been in a number of his books so uh, one of the things you'll see about Sebastio is that pictures he took in one project often repeat themselves so this photograph is in uh, the book The Sahal, but it's also then in the book Migrations as well. Um, and it's an amazing, amazing photograph. Um, part, I mean, obviously, uh, the conditions in which people find themselves refugees surrounding this giant tree. Uh, but if you look at the light, my god, you know, it's, it's light that would challenge any photographer. And I think most photographers probably would never attempt to make this kind of photograph. They might focus in right here. But he's going very, very wide uh, in, in this photograph. And he's capturing this just amazing, amazing stream of sunlight that's being filtered through the trees. Um, and the, the graininess of the light and the kind of softness that we find in this group of people, um, I think, just makes it more real. And, and you find a lot of that in his photographs, where you look at a photograph and you, f and you can place yourself there because the, the way he captures the light is just incredibly, incredibly uh, real. Um, then framing it with the people in the back, um, of course the families, their, their body positions, um, the, f the fact that most of the people aren't seeing him, even though we know he's there, and that's partly his waiting for that moment, watching very carefully, always looking, shooting a lot. He, he photographs, you know, it's never one click. It's many, many photographs waiting for that moment to happen. Yeah, I think the fact that um, we look at this and we aren't depressed, I mean, we feel sad that this is happening, but I think that he, he's able to create um, a sense of humanity, and, and um, I would place him in, in a part of documentary photography that's called the humanist vision, that photographers really believe that these people, in spite of their horrible conditions, do have humanity, do have spirit, and do have soul inside of them that often is not portrayed or seen. And I think he has a way of um, 
showing that humanity in his photographs. And part of it is, I think, the fact that the people are clumped together and there is a community of people. And even though they're refugees and they're in a war-torn country and they're most likely malnourished, um, it is their world and there is a community and a bond and a spirit that they have. And I think th that spirit comes out um, in the way he sees in this use of the light, almost the godlike light coming down and bathing the people, the natural setting. Um, and so he's, he's, um, he has very few pictures in which people are um, in, in such horrible conditions that you, you can't look. Even though some of his pictures are hard, there, there is a warmth to them. And that warmth he gets through the way he sees and the way he composes and the way he reads the light and interprets it. I remember the first time I saw this picture, and it's just, um, as I have described, cinematic in its, in its light and tonal range. Um, and there's always, if you look deeply in, in his photographs, there's often a mystery. Um, so I think, you know, the sky is just amazing, and, and there you have um, the, the grain of the mountains and um, his ability to get so close. And people have often asked me, this has to be set up. How could a photographer, even you know, a white photographer who doesn't speak the language, get close? But he has this amazing ability to be inside people's circle. And there he is, literally you know, um, a short distance using a wide angle lens. Um, and very, very conscious of the body language, um, the, the compositional elements, the, the father, you know, how it's framed to the top of his head and is looking right at you with the whites of his eyes. And remember, this is film, so this is not in the digital age in which you go in with Photoshop. This is a photographer really seeing this moment, really um, emotionally trying to figure out how do I tell this story? What are the elements? Where do I move? Um, the young child looking down and the way that they're, they're wrapped. Um, and then, of course, one of the key elements is um, the mother on, on the left, her face turned away, um, but yet we see the light reflecting off of her face or part of the face and, and, and the blankets. Um, it's, just a, it's just an amazing, I want to say haunting, photograph that um, f in one photograph really fully describes the tragedy and the trauma that people had in the Sudan during the famine. And uh, this was taken in 1984 um, and, and ended up, in fact, being the cover of the UC Press book on the Sahal.